Have you ever listened to your choir and thought, mm, something's not quite right. The harmony is there, but it needs a little extra mm, added to it. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about three things that you can implement that can help your choir get, get that sound that you are looking for. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to another edition of the Choir Directors Academy show. I am your host, Angela Elaine, and it's good to be here. Thank you all that have already subscribed and liked these videos. You send me comments, you send me emails, you're telling me that I am helping you. I am so glad to hear you say that because everyone likes to know that they're helping somebody. Yes. Thank you. But to those of you who are new, hit the subscribe button and that bell so that you can join the rest of the people that whenever I post a video, you will, be able, you will know rather that information is coming your way to help you do better with your choir. Gospel choirs are kind of tricky, you know, with the other ones where you have everybody that knows um, music at a higher level than the average person, um, your, your uh, experiences will be slightly different. But to those of us who handle gospel church, gospel choirs are different in that we have people with all different levels of music. Some have, some have a, are extremely good and some are not, but we basically work with those that we receive and those that we get in the choir who are not up to par, we help them get to par so that the entire unit sounds as one. Sometimes when, you, when you're working with your choir, we focus so much on harmonies that we forget other three other things that might just help us get over the hump, right? You don't want your choir to just sound good. You want to be able to understand what they're saying. The, the beauty of any, any uh, institution or any group or any uh, mass of people, the beautiful thing is when they all move in a synchronized form. That is just you know, because it takes something because in this world now we're taught to be individualistic. You know, I don't have to look like you. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. But when you're working with a choir, everyone has to forget about what they want to do and become one so that the sound is one. You remember that from the movie Drumline? One band, one sound, multiple people, multiple, multi-talented people. But when they all play together, you hear one sound. Same thing with the choir. We want the choir to have one sound. One of the first tips that I can share with you that really helped me is to make sure that everyone is singing in the correct vocal section. A lot of times, I know in the, gospel, in the church choirs, we ask people, what do you sing? The average person has no clue what they sing, right? They tell you, oh, I sing alto because they're a lazy soprano. Or I sing soprano and they're really an alto. Or I sing alto and they're really a tenor. You, it is your job to place everybody where they belong. Don't just take their word for it. Just do a simple song, right? Stick it, put it in the key, maybe start a C3, and then just start singing. And when they start fading out, uh, no, you know, you're, if you're female, you're an alto. Some females are tenors, right? But you need to be able to go over the songs with a song, just a simple song, and determine their vocal range and make sure that they are in the correct voice section. Because if you got people singing and they're in a, if they're really a, 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 an alto and they sing a soprano, guess what? They're always gonna be screeching. The sopranos will never have that full rounded sound. All right? And then some sopranos, they just lazy. They're gonna sing with the alto and that's why we have a big mass of altos and we sound like the way we do. I know because I am an alto, true alto. Some people are strictly sopranos, some people are strictly altos, and some people are strictly tenors. That has a big impact on the sound of your choir. So you need to do a semi-audition, determine what voice they actually sing, and put them there. They'll sing it, don't worry about it. They'll sing it. And then you will, you will that lopsidedness that you hear will now become more balanced because now you got singers singing where they're comfortable, not where they want to be, but where their voice is telling you that where they belong. And you will see a grand difference when you do that. Tip number two, pronunciation versus enunciation. A lot of times we get that confused. Many of our church gospel choirs do not enunciate our words. <laughs> Half the time people have, if they did not know the song, they would be clueless as to what you're saying. For instance, one song I hear most choirs,
requires the enunciation, especially in the tenor section, is horrid. I just cringe when I hear it. It's Hezekiah Walker's song, How Much We Can Bear, especially at the end. It's like, how much we, we can bear, we can bear. normally sounds when I hear it. I'm just like, pronounce the words. And then the choir looks at me like, what? I am going to, no, enunciate. I really should say enunciate, but I say pronounce the words because they have no idea when I say enunciate. Pronunciation deals with the actual saying of the word. Bear. We're saying bear, bear, like B-E-A-R, but it sounds like we're saying bear, you know, no distinction. Enunciation is the clarity or the distinction in the sound. So let me do it again. How much we, we can bear, we can bear. How much, how much we, we can bear, we can bear. All right, you understand there was a difference. So if I don't know the song, but I can understand what you're saying because you're saying how much we, we can bear. We can bear enunciation. You'd be surprised when you focus on enunciation with your group and have them to pronounce and enunciate the words when they're singing. And a lot of times, this is another sidebar tip. Um, I had that problem in the choir, so that's why I can say that I'm true. This is what I did. It sounds kind of crazy and whatever else, and they will laugh and think it's stupid. But believe me, after winning multiple competition, competitions and finally winning How Sweet the Sound, it works. What I did was I had the choir to over-exaggerate their speaking. African Americans, as a rule of thumb, we slur our words. Not because we're so much lazy, but we, we speak according to the people who are around us. If we, you know, my father happened to be a person who was heavily on diction. So for me to pronounce words correctly and distinctly or enunciate them is not hard for me because that's what I heard growing up. Even though I grew, grew up on the west side of Chicago, which was considered the ghetto, but my parents were all about education. My mother was an English home economics major. So they strove and drilled in enunciation, pronounce your words, you know, we, I heard that from a child growing up. So anyway, with the choir, I did the same thing. What I did, if we were singing, just say we were singing how much we can bear, I would have them say how much we, we can bear, we can bear. I had them to sing that way. How much we, we can bear, we can bear. I had them to do that. And it sounds, yeah, I know it sounds crazy. It looks stupid and whatever else. But let me tell you, it has to get in their minds and their spirits. So every time they came to choir rehearsal, I would make them sing like that. I don't care what we sing. They had to exaggerate because as a theory, as proven theory, you only going to get as much as you put out. So you have to push them beyond 110% in order to get 80% so that when they stand before people, they will sing perfectly. Because you get nervous. When you're singing, another side tip, when you're singing and you're nervous, you already lose 10% of whatever you learn. <laughs> you, you, it, it never fails. It, I, my choir has proved this hundreds of times. We can go to choir rehearsal and they give it 110%, but when they stand in front of the people, I might get 90. Which, to the average person listening to them, is like, man, that choir can sing. Listen to them. I mean, I heard every word they say. But, you know, in my mind, I'm sitting there going, oh, my God. Help me not to focus on the fact that I am getting 70 to 80, maybe 90% of what, I, what, you know, what we did. But we had to do that. And after a while, it got in their spirits to actually, after a while, they just automatically enunciated. I didn't have to tell them, pronounce your words. I didn't have to do that. They already know, pronounce, so that people can understand what I'm saying. So that's how that works. So e work, focus on enunciation which is the art of clarity, making sure that the person understands what you're saying. All right, tip number three, breathing in a synchronized fashion. That's 
One of the things that I noticed also with choirs is when they're singing and people are not breathing properly. You have to work with them to breathe. Um, one of the steps I did, and I'm going to uh, put the link below for uh, one of my friends. She's a vocal coach, and she, I did a show with her mm, maybe three months ago or something like that. But she gave some excellent vocal tips to assist on teaching your choir how to breathe, or just individual breathing. But that you need to take it and translate it to the choir. Most of the times, people just sing willy-nilly. You know, we're in a choir, we, we, we don't try to really synchronize people. But if you want your choir to really get better, then you need to work with them. First of all, I would take a simple song and have them to just learn how to control the breathing. You don't have to let, you know, a lot of times people think when you inhale, honestly, people shouldn't even know that you're inhaling. But, you know, a lot of times the choir, <sighs> You know, they're all dramatic. You know, I got to let everybody know I'm taking a breath. You know, you don't have to do that. Just inhale through your nose. Hold it. Practice holding. Having them to hold their breath. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe. Let it out. And each time you increase the inc increment until it gets up to seven, eight. Breathe. Right? Get everybody to do that at one time. And then after a while, hope, have them sing like a note. Just lo, and just have them go lo. Five. That was five seconds. Have them to do that, right? And then each time you add it longer. Get everybody to do it at the same time. So the next time when you hold it, and then recognize when they when, when they when they get to the point where they like, don't let them get to that point. Cut them off. You know they're strong. By the time they hit five, four, five, they're about ready to start passing out. Don't hold them. Don't stand there going. And then you end up with one person going. No. Cut them off at the five. You'd rather have it short and strong than <laughs> long and yet. You know, that, that then, they, then the people are going to look at you like, do you even realize what's going on with your people? So that's another thing. Have them to practice holding their breath, singing. And that's why we go back to number one, making sure that everybody's in their voice. That's part of that. If you're not singing the proper voice, in the, pro the proper voice, whether you're soprano, alto, or tenor, you will not be able to hold that note. If, it, if you're in your comfortable range, you can hold a note at least five seconds without even in, taking in another, another breath. Right? You don't want to hold them indefinitely. Sometimes you hear mass choirs, and they hold that note for such a long time. That's because they have it synchronized where a certain amount of people hold it. No, here. One, two, three, four, five. Then the other ones come in, not in a, not like, oh, no. You come in, right where they leave it off, you come in. So the sound is smooth and they're resting, and then another group comes in while they're resting, and then another group comes in while they're resting, and then by the time they get the director knows in the end, and everybody just come in. But it's not with a strong, forceful sound, but with a soft sound. And that's why you hear it sounds so smooth. It's just like, the, how they hold their breath? Because they have it synchronized. Groups are coming in on the same one. Nobody's coming in overbearing, strong, or anything like that, right? You have to teach them how to sing synchronized with their breathing, and then their songs will be synchronized. They'll learn how to sing together, right? And when they breathe, they'll breathe together, and it won't sound so breathy, and so like everybody fatigued and sweating and whatnot, they sound like a uniform group. So number one, make sure everybody is singing in their right section. Don't let these sopranos tell you that they sing alto and they sing soprano. And then when you sing, search me, search me, Lord, you hear alto hitting the high note. That right there tell you in the wrong section. So make sure. I get it all the time, trust me. Especially when I was state minister of music. I got it all the time. First of all, make sure they are singing in the right voice. They're in the right section. Don't let them tell you. You do the testing, do the audition, and figure it out. Number two, make sure they enunciate, enunciate, which means to add clarity to your speech. Make sure I understand what you're saying. Not just saying bear, but bear. Make sure I understand what you're saying. And number three, breathe. Sometimes I tell the choir all the time, breathe. Get them into the synchronized breathing. When they learn to synchronize their breathing, then they will also sing each, each word at the proper time. 
It'll be much smoother and much congenial that everything just comes together like this. And then you're sitting there going, wow, they sound massive. They sound strong. Listen, if this video has helped you, which I really think it did, but if this video has helped you, please hit that like button and share, subscribe, and hit that bell so that the next time we will, when I post a video, you will be invited to take a peek. Listen, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you to all of you who send me all of these hearts and love telling me how much I help you. I appreciate it. I will continue to do this as long as I know that I am helping people get better and serve in the kingdom of God. Love all y'all. Peace.